Joshua and Susan Powell appear to be a couple from a fairy tale. They are the support structures for their family. But what happens when a piece of that support goes missing? And then what happens when the remaining blocks start to fall? There was a man and his children. I just dropped off the children and he wouldn't let me in the door. Tacoma, Washington, fall of 2000. Joshua Powell is attending a dinner party hosted by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There he meets a young fellow Mormon named Susan Cox. It was love at first sight. The two instantly became a couple and would date for a period of just eight months before becoming man and wife at a Portland, Oregon temple on April 6, 2001. Shortly after their marriage, Josh and Susan moved in with Josh's father, Stephen, in South Hill, Washington. This arrangement lasted for two years before moving to West Valley City, Utah in 2003. It is speculated that the reason behind the move originated from bizarre feelings and behavior from Stephen. Stephen later describes his feelings to Susan while documenting the conversation something that I shouldn't be interpreting. Um, you know, it just, for example, when we were sitting on the couch, it just felt like you were very, um, you know, I, I mean, I was extremely aroused, and I think you were somewhat aroused, at least I thought. On January 19, 2005, the Powell family welcomed their first child, Charlie, a healthy baby boy. Just two years later, the couple welcomes into the world their second son, Brayden. Although they appear to be building the perfect family life, Joshua's controlling behavior and exorbitant spending habits brought severe strain on the marriage. In 2007, the couple files for bankruptcy, claiming a debt of over $200,000. Friends and acquaintances of the Powell family also noted that Josh appeared to be a very controlling husband often managing the bank account and even restricting what type of food Susan would be allowed to purchase for her family. The abuse was also said to have gotten physical on at least one occasion. On June 28, 2008, Susan Powell writes a letter to her family and friends stating that she could not trust Josh and that she was using this letter as means of a paper trail should anything happen to her if they got divorced. She warned them that if she died, it may not be an accident, even if it appeared to be. The letter was locked away in Susan's safe deposit box at Wells Fargo Bank where she worked. One month later, on July 29, 2008, Susan records videos documenting her assets in preparation for a potential separation with Josh. Uh, this is me. July 29th, 2008, covering all my bases, making sure that if something happens to me or my family or all of us that our assets are documented. Hope everything works out and we're all happy and live happily ever after as much as that's possible. On December 7th, 2009, Susan unexpectedly does not show up for work while her two sons, Charlie and Brayden, are not dropped off for daycare. The police were notified, and after unsuccessful attempts to reach Susan and Josh, they break into the Powell home, where nobody can be found. Though two box fans were spotted drawing a damp puddle on the couch and carpet area, along with Susan's purse and identification. Later that evening, at approximately 6.40 p.m., Joshua Powell returns home with the boys, claiming that the three of them took an overnight camping trip, leaving Susan in the home to sleep. When suspicions arose why Joshua would go on an overnight camping trip knowing he had to wake up for work early the next morning, he stated that he thought today was Sunday and not Monday. Joshua also tells police that he tried several times to reach Susan by phone, 
but it was later discovered that Susan's phone was not with Susan at all, but instead in Josh's car. The next day, on December 8, 2009, Joshua is brought in for questioning. His oldest son, Charlie, is being questioned as well in a totally separate room. All right, Charlie. You told me that um, you went camping with your mom, your dad, and your little brother to Dinosaur National Park, right? Yeah. And you said that mommy stayed at the park, right? Yeah. How come mommy stayed? Because it had so much pretty on where it's because it has so much pretty where a princess will. Approximately one week after Susan was reported missing, Joshua goes to Susan's bank and withdraws all the money in her IRA accounts and cancels all of Susan's future medical appointments. He also abruptly stops cooperating with the police. With the pressure mounting from Chuck and Judy Cox, Joshua Powell files a temporary restraining order against his father-in-law. Though this would not prevent Chuck and Judy from organizing a small rally just feet away from the supermarket where Josh frequently visited. It did not take long for Josh and Stephen Powell to confront Susan's father. Well, I just came down here because we were going to get a picture of Chuck Cox. We believe he's in violation of a restraining order because Josh Josh shops at this store and he is Here, not supposed to come. Like That's to fine. I know, it, I know it doesn't mention Fred Meyer, but he knows we shop at Fred Meyer. He knows this is our neighborhood store. And that's so you why, own the neighborhood? No. We're gonna, we'll, we'll have to you add this. Live, you guys live a few miles, Josh they live, live a few miles apart from Yeah, exactly. So, These so people you knew he was going to be here, and you came here yourself knowing that there's a restraining We just wanted, I wanted, to, we wanted to see if he was here because we wanted to be able to have something to say at the hearing on Tuesday. We're having a hearing Tuesday. We That's weren't right. going to bring this up with the media. He brought it up with the media. But you okay? came here. I did come here. Yes, I did. Because I wanted to see what that was going on and I wanted and, to And I have one Chuck question for here. you. How okay. is you coming here helping to find Susan? It isn't helping to find Susan. How is your standing at our neighborhood market helping to find Susan? Joshua's younger brother, Michael, also became a person of interest after discovering that he had his car towed to a salvage yard in Oregon to be destroyed merely two weeks after Susan's disappearance. A cadaver dog hit on the car and signaled that human decomposition was present in the trunk, though DNA tests came out inconclusive. During a search in the home of Stephen Powell in 2011, the police discovered thousands of images and videos from many unsuspecting women, including Susan Powell. I offered to rub her feet, to rub her toes, to give her some stimulation. That went on. I probably rubbed her feet, her toes, her beautiful feet. She has such pretty feet. Of course, everything about her is pretty beautiful. And I know she felt it. I mean, I know she, I mean, she couldn't have missed it. She's not naive either, I know, from what I've read in her journals. Um, that girl is not naive. When I started massaging her legs, I would have loved to go all the way up her legs, but I did do her calves because her feet were resting in my crotch, so I sort of rubbed her calves. She didn't seem to mind at all having me that close. I mean, I was close. I was touching her with my crotch. In the wake of this discovery, Stephen Powell is arrested and Charlie and Brayden are removed from the custody of Josh and brought to live with Susan's parents. Joshua would be granted supervised visits. On February 5, 2012, a social worker escorts the boys to visit their father on Super Bowl Sunday. When she arrives at the home, Joshua grabs his sons and tells them that he has a surprise waiting for them inside. When he brings the boys inside, he shuts the door, locking out the social worker. Starting to smell odd fumes coming from within the house, the social worker calls the police. Ma'am, were you calling about the fire in the 8200 block of yes, 188 Street Party? Yes, the house. Ma'am, yes, do, you know the, the house. Okay, do you know the exact address of the house? Or are yes, you it's, eight, it's 8119 189th Street. 
On February 11, 2013, Joshua Powell's brother Michael commits suicide by jumping off a seven-story building in Minneapolis, Minnesota. On August 22, 2015, Stephen Powell receives another five-year prison sentence for child pornography, but will only serve two years due to good behavior. While on parole, he dies from a heart attack on July 24, 2018. In 2013, Chuck and Judy Cox sued the Washington Department of Social and Health Services due to negligence in handling the Powell children. They were awarded $33 million. This is truly a story with no winners. At the end of the day, Josh, Michael, and Stephen all died without providing any answers. Charlie and Brayden were taken far too soon and Chuck and Judy Cox are no closer to finding their daughter than they were in 2009. Hello, this is Josh. I'm inclined to say goodbye. I am not able to live without my son, and I'm not able to go on anymore. Susan Powell has never been found and whatever answers that could lead to her discovery have died along with the rest of the Powell family. Fairy tales can come true, but in this fairy tale, the end is not a happily ever after, but rather the deadly truth.